Welcome to Profit.tv, bringing you the news before it happens. Stream live into your home via the worldwide internet. Welcome to Profit.tv, bringing you the latest news from the spiritual front. The following program is being streamed live from Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Program already in progress. All right, we are talking about tongues and the use of tongues and crowds or audiences. When is it appropriate, not appropriate? All right. Now, do you think... Um, You said that one of the things that, that it, you should not, because you were quoting the Bible, uh, but you said one of the things is um, you shouldn't do tongues in a public meeting unless there's uh, an interpreter. Unless there's an interpreter, or I think it's like... And at the most, let two, two or three. three, okay. Now, let me ask you a question. How accurate do you think, well, let me ask you this question. Okay. Well, wait a second. Yes. Do you find that people like to go to prophecy meetings. Have you noticed that? Everybody wants to get a word. So a lot of people are running around anywhere they think they can get somebody to prophesy a word to them. Right. Isn't that interesting? Do you think there's any abuse of that going on? Uh, tons. All right. Do you remember when Jesus said, they'll say, there's the Christ, there's the Christ, and right. don't go after him? Right. Um, well, didn't Kenneth Copeland say, the Christ means the anointing? Okay, so therefore, we were pointing out a ministry the other day that says you no longer have to fight the devil, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, and it's, well, it's a wrong spirit. That's just not right because there is a, a warfare and you need to be always, Bible Bible says when seasons of refreshing, not seasons of warfare, come on. Um, and especially in this day and age, I don't know what they're talking about. But anyway, the person said, oh, well, there's still a, the Christ there. There's still the anointing there. There's still the anointing on their prophecy. And so these people run and hear this pro this this milk toast prophecy that doesn't raise warriors and they're getting prophesied and they're running here's the Christ here's the here's the here's the anointing here's the anointing all right remember in Paul's day do you remember when the woman who who made her had a demon and she made her money by giving psychic readings right. remember that and she said these men are the God, from the most high god you know boom 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 and Paul finally said come out of her and the demon was cast out of the woman who was running around okay and then Paul got beat because the masters got upset cuz they her woman didn't have any more power anymore all right what do you think happens when that woman had a big following do you know when people are psychics and they have a lot of people come to them do you realize a lot I'm not just gonna pick on women or men but do you realize um, a person we were talking about earlier today sometimes they get their emotional need by positioning themselves where they're praying for your healing and they're they put themselves in that position do you understand that what do you think happens? In other words, I don't know if I explained that. They get their emotional, sad, they get their rite of passage. I am a worthwhile person. I have people love me because I am this. Right. Because I am the big, uh, you know, psychic fortune teller. Okay. This, this gives me my credibility. This makes me hold my head up. That demon comes out. They get with God. Do you think they're just clean? Or do you realize that they can fall right back in to by the Holy Spirit becoming somebody's private psychic. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah. All right. In a meeting, do you have any idea how often people interpret tongues or prophecies by funny spirit? In other words, is what Paul said the global law forever and ever, or was Paul, by the Spirit of God, doing what this Paul, Don Paul, by the Spirit of God would do depending on the, the parameters in the meeting. Right. See, I don't have somebody here that is ha coming out of being a psychic. I have had people come by and I tend to not let them prophesy. Now, if Paul didn't have any of those people, he was saying, let's do it this way. Right. Does that make sense? Because that was a particular meeting he was addressing. That was a particular group of people. I mean, he was speaking specifically to Corinth, the church. Exactly. He was speaking to that church. So uh, uh, every, and again, this was brand new. The Holy Spirit had just been given. This whole thing was new. They were examining Jewish laws, what laws they keep, what laws they get rid of. Does that make sense? Um, and 
do you think that perhaps, see, this is where I think the religious of today, keep in mind, Jesus is not religious, the Pharisees of today, the religious order, I think they turn everything into a global, universal commandment as if Paul was, was Jesus himself. Or, and even what Jesus taught, again, reflected the, to the people, the way that I do meetings, they change based on who's here because you're talking and addressing the circumstances by the gift of the Holy Spirit revealing things. Uh, like I said, I've had people come in that came out of being a fortune teller. Now they're a prophet. Chances are they had a gift of prophet when they started, but the demon captured them. And again, part of what has to happen is there has to be, there's this, God will have me deal with them. And some people's gifts are not real accurate. And the reason is there's other spirits that gain access. So sometimes God has a discipleship time, which means discipline and an accountability structure. Do you realize some of the people aren't even submitted to a regular congregation? So there's not even so self-will. God keeps saying self-will. A lot of times self-will accesses the prophecies. Does that make sense? What, and, and, it, and it mixes with what God is saying. And if they're not in a discipled thing, they don't get that broken in their life. Because they're just self-willed and they find I don't like it. They won't submit to authority. It doesn't mean that authority is better. It means that there's a nature, a spirit that does not want to submit. Once they can submit, they can be free of that spirit. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, okay. So even in the accuracy of prophecy. Now, do you realize in church today, even in the ones that are interpreting, do you realize that most prophecies always sound like everything else? Thus saith the Lordeth, thou shalteth cometh. Does that make sense? And I am coming quickly. Does that make sense? And they just kind of quote the Bible on over and over because it's an acceptable prophecy that the religious, because nobody's really quite discerning if it's the Spirit of God, but it just sounds like the Bible, so it must be God. And do you realize I watch people prophesy stuff and take stuff that's not God or God will say something because they don't recognize His voice. Why? Lack of intimacy. They talk about intimacy, but they don't really know Him. They know the religious spirit, and they think that that's him. It's, just, it's really amazing. So, in today's context, what I have found is that when you pray in tongues violently, you'll clear all kinds of clog away from you. When you pray in tongues violently, a lot of times, because it can be a real... The Spirit of God driving demons out. The churches that have gotten beat up the worst are those that will not allow tongues in church. They're either totally seduced to sleep, playing total religious games, no miracles, no power of God, boring dead church. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, I've watched churches get blown out of this territory when God sent the prophets in because they had taken those scriptures and interpreted it to mean we do not allow tongues in our church, which is stupid. That's not at all what Paul ever said or meant. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all, and I wish you all would do it, not could do it. The fact he said would meant he was dealing with pride, stubbornness. I don't agree. I don't da, da. And I watch people take Paul trying to put some kind of sibilance in one particular meeting of people. See, I see into Paul, and as you read, where, you know, what did he say to the church? Was it the Corinthian? What was the church where the guy was sleeping with the guy's mother? Was that the same church? Corinth, yeah. Same church. All right. So there was major out of order in that church. So he was coming in with an apostolic which addresses and puts stuff in order. All right, well, right now, I don't know that we're dealing with that same issue here. So for it to be a, the living word and for it to be actually dealing, does that make sense? Can you see how it would, it would shift? That's my point. Yeah. Um, the main thing is um, praying in tongues will revolutionize a believer's life. It totally builds up your spirit, man. Does God... The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, right? Jesus said, what did Jesus, God is a spirit. Jesus said, God is a spirit. The true worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth, for God is a spirit. Does God communicate, us, communicate with us intellect to spirit, intellect to soul, or maybe spirit to spirit? So the more I pray in tongues and the more my spirit man is built up, the more I begin to understand the things of the Spirit. Doesn't the Bible say that the carnal mind is an en enmity with God? In other words, an enemy it cannot understand, it cannot fathom, it is not subject, it's self-willed. Do you, find, you realize that tongues bypasses this thing's ability to get in the middle and do self-willed prayers? 
Does that make sense? And so the more you're praying in tongues, the more your spirit man is built up. And the more you begin... Today, you know, I was trying to pray, and I couldn't. Because anything I said, I, all I could do was pray in tongues. I couldn't pray in English. Why? Because everything I said was tomfoolery. It was stupidness. It was, it was human. It was my little nothingness. It was my little nothingness when there's major things that... God cares about on a national level going on. Does that make sense? And I just begin to weep and cry. But do you understand? Sometimes when you really begin to, to have relation with Him and you really begin to realize how much He loves people and how little we know. Does that make sense? Yes. And how little uh, the, our religious opinions and all the nonsense we get into. My God. I tell people all the time, just pray for me in tongues. Because I trust him praying more than people's opinions or judgment or religious stuff, agendas. So many people have agendas. You realize I got... Hi. <laughs> Do you realize I got an email and it said... Well, let me not jump ahead here. Um, anyway, is that, is that interesting, kind of with the tongue stuff? I want to be led of the Spirit daily. What was the first mir First thing happened? What was Jesus? Let's look at Jesus' walk real quick. What did Jesus do? Gets baptized in the Holy Ghost, gets water baptized. Obedience. I did not get tongues until I went and got water baptized. Even though my spiritual mom prayed on and on and on, it wasn't happening. And then I saw that Jesus got water baptized. And John said to Jesus, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, let all things be done in order. And I went, huh. It was good enough for Jesus to submit to water well, who the heck do I think I am? I'm going to go get water. I'm going to follow in his footsteps. What God was waiting for me to do was he was waiting for me to follow instead of trying to lead. Because so often we get some intellect and then we start leading the Bible study. And this is what goes on in the church so much. We start leading everything, everything, and we're not led. Right. So we, we're doing everything our way. And we get it down and we build divisions. and data. Okay. When I came up, that's when I got water baptized, or baptized in tongues. Now, it's really interesting, but the first thing that happened is the Spirit then drives him into the wilderness. He battles with the devil. He gets dominion over all those deceiving spirits so that he can hold focus and come through t with truth, not battling with demons that make you pray funny or do funny things or whatever. Does that make sense? So he, he doesn't get knocked off balance. He comes through upright. Does that, okay? And what's the first thing that happens? His, he goes to a wedding. And his mom says they need wine. And he said, woman, my time is not yet. So even though the spirit came on him, even though he was dealing with the devil, it still wasn't his time for public ministry yet. Isn't that interesting? Now his mother says something interesting. She says to the servants, whatever he says, do it. All right, so let's look at that for a minute. Do you think he might have been doing miracles around his mom privately? Of course he was. Why would she say... It wasn't the first time she said that. And why would she even go to him and say, you need to do something, they need wine? Remember, they read the Bible. They knew when the prophet prayed and the oil kept multiplying and the widow woman, they knew what other prophets had done. Come on, when they said to them, are you Elijah, that prophet, the Jew? They knew the scriptures. They knew the stories. They were looking, are you the one to come? They were looking for the, they were looking for the next prophet. Now, what I find very fascinating is I, I, I absolutely, because of her comments, indicates that his mom had seen, are you cold? His mom had seen him, him do types of miracles. That's why, A, she said, hey, you need to do something. Hey, woman, why don't, it's not my time yet. In other words, don't reveal what we've done in private to people yet. It's not time publicly. It's fine that we did that and, and you got healed the other day. It's, does that make, can you see that or am I the only one that can see that? Why would he, she go to him and say, hey, blah, 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 blah. In other words, you can fix this too. Hey, hey, wait, it's not my time. And then, and then she goes quietly, she goes, listen, whatever he says, just do it, do it, do it to the servants. Does that make sense? And then Jesus, boom, moves. He w didn't just suddenly start moving in miracles. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. Obviously, he's baptized in the Holy Spirit, goes to himself. Obviously, there's all, what does it say? If all the miracles he did were written, the books couldn't contain him in all the world, all right? So obviously, he was flowing in an anointing. Come on, the Bible says he was given the Spirit without measure. He obviously, come on, the water turns white. He's obviously moving in some power. His mom sees it. I think it's really interesting, too, that his mom saw and was proud of the anointing on her son's life. Do you realize today, 
So, I mean, anybody ever had to fight their mom when it comes to things of the spirit? My mom's for me today. Does that make sense? But boy, there was a struggle. Isn't that interesting? And sometimes the parents just aren't, aren't even for you. Don't you realize that Jesus could do no mighty miracles because of their unbelief? Wow, do you have any idea what kind of influence a parent has on their kids? I don't care if they're church religious or not. I'm not talking religious. I'm talking moving in the power of the Holy Spirit, doing what Jesus did. Because Jesus wasn't being religious. In fact, he, what was the second miracle he did? He didn't even do a miracle. The second thing that's reported he does, if you follow John, is he goes right into the middle of the church system. And he starts saying, you've turned this thing into merchandise. You've turned it into a business. That's the next thing he does. After he moves in the power of God publicly, that was his first public, and he wasn't supposed to be revealed yet, is what he was saying. He then goes in and just blows up the religious thing because everybody has turned it into marketing, merchandising business where there's no room for the anointing. Isn't that interesting? So I just find that fascinating. The, the main thing, if, if I could impart anything, is just to have a hunger, A, to know Him, not religion. Does that make sense? To know God, to know His voice. And I got news for you, He's not going to sound religious. He's going to sound like that voice you've been listening to ever since you've been a little kid. Does that make sense? Because He's been talking to us, all of us our whole life. There's been other voices and other things, and you know what I'm saying, and different woundings, but God is always for us. He's always been talking to us. He's always had a call and destiny. And it's really interesting because when you find that center or that place of confidence, does that make sense, that it's God guiding you? Great peace. See, the Bible says, all your life you were alienated in your mind. What does that mean from God? What does that mean? In your mind, you perceived you and God at odds or different. What did Jesus come to do? Break down the inner wall of division. So God wasn't trying to get us religious. Does that make sense? So that we could quote 10 Hail Marys and, and go through all this stuff. We've got an ancient text that's been interpreted. But the whole point of the text was to bring revelation or understanding about right standing with God, with Him. So that we don't see ourselves. See, in the Garden of Eden, they didn't partake of an apple. They partook of a fruit, which is an attitude. A fruit of your mind, renew the spirit of your mind, the fruit of your mind, the fruit. It was an attitude of judgment. Judge not, least you be judged. For by the same measure you judge, you judge yourself. So all of a sudden, when they partook of this attitude, they suddenly saw, my God, I'm naked, I'm, 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 I'm a dump, I'm, I'm awful. There's nothing good in me, I'm a mess. We, they we judged ourselves. God never judged man like that, but man judged himself, and that judgment separated him. He no longer could see himself in the same, in God's eyes or in the same place. But God, all through the Bible, says, Gideon, mighty man of valor. Gideon says, no, I'm a mess. He's judging himself. I'm messed up. I'm no good. There's nothing good in me. No, you're a mighty man of valor. If you don't believe you are what I say, you'll never be established. Do you realize that people in the religious orders I'm saying that, not just picking on religious, people in everywhere, including those that are supposed to be getting liberated by this, but it's turned into a religion, they never see themselves in God's eyes. They see another image of themselves, or they try and fit a religious image, or worse yet, try and pray it onto other people or pray them into boxes. Does that make sense of religious control, which has nothing to do with what God's doing? What the, what the actual scriptures do say is a mighty spiritual army, so your spirit man must be built up. I must be, my spirit man must be built up because it's not a natural soulish army or a physical army. It's a spiritual army, so there must be great authority in the spirit. Every, not breaking rank. Everybody walking in their own path. Doing what? Minding their own business not minding each other's lives. What did Paul deal with again when he was trying to, to put some order? He said, you're being busybodies. A bunch of the, the women were running around, and I'm not picking on women, but they were getting into everybody's life. And Paul was like, look, go get married and spend that, that time with, with interacting with the children. And, and use that energy creatively. Don't use it to busybody and destroy and gossip. And um, boy, what do we do? You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm not picking on you guys at all. That's not what I'm saying. But isn't that interesting? Because we're back to the same thing. The whole point of coming here or to any church 
should be that there is no male or female. We're not bringing our male-female issues here. We're supposed to be laying that down, praying in the Holy Ghost, building our spirit man up, right? Because there's no lo- in the spirit, there's no longer male nor female. But a lot of times people don't. They want to come to church with their male-female issues, and then we do soulish things to cater to that, and we have a big congregation, and then we think we've done church. And we haven't even assisted in raising a spiritual army where people aren't minding each other's businesses, but when we need to come together and deal with major demons or witchcraft or stuff that's caused destruction in the nation, we talked earlier, and, and God's been speaking to me about this. You ever heard of such a thing as displacement theology? When a spirit goes out of a man, it goes through dry places, seeking rest, tries to come back seven times stronger to return to repossess the land, the body. A body is made out of dirt and water, okay? Our body is made out of earth, right? God said, as it is in a man, so it is in a, in a city. In other words, uh, in the man of the Gadarenes. You remember the story, man of the Gadarenes? Jesus gets off the boat. The demon, demonized guy is, meets him at the beach. What have we to do with you, son of the most high God? Do you remember the story? And he said, what is your name? We are Legion, for we are many. Guy had 2,000 demons in him. Have you come here to torment us before the time? And then they begged him, listen, don't cast us, here we go, out of this country. That was the territorial principalities in the guy living at the beach. You see that along the cliff sometimes here. And go up and watch the guys talk and watch them at night. Watch them curse, the fi- watch them, the demons in them prophesying demonic things because it's the same thing that we got along here. And this is a major gateway that influences Hollywood and influences major parts of the territory. It's really interesting when you start understanding the dynamics of a city spiritually and what causes influence. Tibetan witchcraft, um, Buddhism, um, Witchcraft, um, phew, gosh, American Indians, L. Ron Hubbard. You know, you go through lists of people that access the gateways and understand this stuff, but in the Christian church, we don't understand. And that's what it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. But Jesus talks about the gates of hell not prevailing. Uh, he talks about those that have been given the key to the bottomless pit. The key is a revelation, and when they open it, a smoke arises, and the spirits, when they enter a territory. Haven't you ever been from city to city, and every city has a different feeling? That's the ruling principality over the city. Eventually, the sons of God meet Jesus in the spiritual clouds in the altitude, dethrone powers and principalities, are seated in heavenly places, and there is no longer found in heaven a place for the devil. See, that's where we're supposed to be heading. But the religious spirit keeps people heading for the rapture, keeps them heading for, you know, constantly round in the circle playing church games. Does that make sense? What's happening is while our nation is going in, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Islamic spirit and some of those spirits, those are some of the most oppressive spirits around. Very oppressive, horrible bondage. Do you realize it's the spirit of God that, for whatever natural reason, penetrated into that territory? Do you realize as those spirits come moving back in the United States are hitting people like Michael Moore with his latest anti-Bush, get him unelected, Fahrenheit 9-11, um, who, which just won at Cannes. Cannes is in France, Cannes Film Festival. France, let me tell you, the Tibetan witchcraft's been all through France, opening up sand mandalas and gates of hell and releasing demons. W- U.S. World News reported anti-Semitism is worse today in the world than ever before. Five to six incidences a day of men beating Jews in the head with bats. The very thing that happened at L.A. when they opened up the portal here, I could feel demons hitting me. Scott Bauer got beat in the head, dropped dead of a brain aneurysm right at the feet of the prophets. And the worst fires in California started right after they did that uh, particular mandala here. So there's been these, these things that these groups of people are doing. The Christians are totally oblivious. The pastors do not want to talk about it. Why? They're afraid. They don't understand it. You're either dealing with fear. Well, you're dealing with fear. You're dealing with pride of doctrine, of intellectual doctrine. You're dealing with the fact that people don't hear the voice of God. Does that make sense? You've got people that do that are like in major confusion because they're trying to follow and wait for the rapture and just be a nice person and think that's all there is to Christendom. It has nothing to do with meeting Jesus in the cloud. Well, they just say, well, that doesn't happen now. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I'm seated in heavenly place. I have a territorial dominion because I have fought into that territory. That's why, and whenever you have a man of God seated in in, an authority, destruction can't hit a territory. God takes me into territories all the time to break destruction from hitting it. 
I know it totally because I've been walking it. That's why God has me teaching where we're supposed to be headed. Most Christians are stunted in their growth because they have no vision. They don't know where they're headed. They don't understand that the whole kingdom is built line upon line, precept upon precept. When Adam fell, he didn't fall off the side of a mountain or off a turnip truck. He fell from a spiritual altitude. God is redeeming things back to him. Does that make sense? So um, it's just interesting. I'm just saying, you've got, you've got, it's just, uh, don't get me, I get frustrated because I know what's possible for a son of God. I know the authority that's possible. I know that demonic and destruction can't hit cities when, when there's sons of God in authority. See, anytime a spirit comes into that, a territory where a son of God is in authority, it gets uncovered and it gets exposed. You remember the fourth airplane that did not hit its target? Do you realize that went down right in the backyard of intercessors of a church that we were working with in that territory? And they had, six months earlier, gotten a bunch of pastors together, went to the high place, and started coming against the principalities. They weren't ready for that level of fight. Um, all kind, what happened is all kinds of corruption in City Hall got exposed, and a bunch of people got fired in City Hall, and a bunch of financial fraud stuff. But immediately, his marriage was hit, the other pastors, everybody did, the, the church, because they, they, they went too high too quick. Part of what God has us doing with these, these, these meetings, these church meetings that we do, and the CDs that we send out around the world, is building the warriors. And the reason is, once we started identifying key targets and how by hitting and blocking and breaking certain things, how, why the nation was Antichrist, why the things were happening, and where you hit, we turned around to try to get the church. There's no warriors. They're full of fear. They're full of their own agendas. Does that make sense? So there were no warriors to hit the gateways or to guard the city. Ezekiel 22, I looked for a man who would stand, build a wall and stand before me on behalf of the city. But I found, uh, uh, stand in the gap before me on behalf of the city. But I found none. Therefore, bam, the destruction hits the city. There's no spiritual shielding. Today, God is talking about building spiritual walls. Why? Because as we penetrate other areas, come on, Africa, what's been going on? We've been sending Reinhard Bucky, boom, boom, boom. Don't you realize that since that's been happening, a lot of the witchcraft has been coming over here. Look at our TV. What's happening? We hit there and the spirits move here. And because the church is, is baby, infant, carnal, doesn't know anything about the spirit realm, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm just saying what it should be walking in. Would it be fair to say that that's truly an American phenomenon? American phenomena. Not I mean, in Africa. My family is from the West Indies, and people in that area Good. have a very clear sense of a spiritual world. You're, you're absolutely, yep. And things like, um, you know, they know that this this territory belongs to this God, so don't do anything like crazy over here because then you'll get hit. And they know that. And it's not crazy or weird. It's normal. Good. But then when you come to America, everything is so scientific. You have to have empirical evidence for everything. They want to see the numbers. You know, why is he evil to MC squared? You know, all of that kind of stuff. That's <laughs> it's all, it's all, do you know why? Because this is the God of this temple. And Paul said, make no mistake, you'll not come into the day of the Lord until there's a falling away. And the son of perdition who sits in the temple of God showing that he's God. Does that make sense? And, and over here, intellect is God. That's why praying in tongues is so important. Because you fall into it. The people that have the hardest time praying in tongues are those that have very, very strong uh, intellect. If, if you've ever been hurt in a relationship, right? People who used to trust their heart no longer will. Now they try to control it. And you'll see real controlling people. A lot of times when you have a relationship, somebody's very controlling, it's because they were hurt. Now they will not allow their heart and they will not trust, but they will manipulate and control to protect themselves. Unfortunately, it just makes you bonkers crazy and <laughs> and you just ah! but anyway I thank you for saying that you're absolutely right the American church is totally self-absorbed um, and it's not listening it does not understand spiritual things so what's happening and the reason these African churches and the reason these other places is because they've been dealing with the spirit realm they understand that. You get African pastors over here, they understand about water spirits. And what's funny is the American pastors don't even want to hear this stuff, even though it's in the scriptures. And the, therefore, the, yes? The, the early American church did. They were, you know, fire and brimstone. They were like very spiritual and that whole, whole thing. But I think we just got lazy and spoiled after, after time. We took it for granted. We didn't have to do it. No, I mean, okay. Yeah. <sighs> Um, yeah, there was more witchcraft in Africa. There was more spiritual things going on. People were more attuned to it. But what happened in America, and uh, Don Upham would be very really good at this because he's in Los Don went to seminary at one point, and he should probably tell the story. But basically, 
they were having to agree to stuff that wasn't even scriptural and it didn't even matter because it was just the criteria of, of the seminary and basically to become a see they, they raised a bunch of religious leaders not spiritual leaders and people sit under religious leaders that lead huge churches and it's not a spiritual leader and but yet the scripture says my children are taught by my spirit does that make sense? And so often you meet people that move in miracles. God would not let me go through that. He pulled me aside to teach me himself. Why? Because we get caught up in a corporate idea of acceptable doctrines that we can EMC e equals MCs that we can, okay, we're safe here. We're not getting too out of order. But the problem is we're dealing with spiritual warfare. We're dealing with spiritual armies that are devastating the United States. And if the body of Christ if the real, see, Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Since the gates of hell are prevailing against the American church, then maybe the American church is not the church Jesus talked about. Or maybe my people perish for lack of knowledge, which is the same thing. They are the potential of being the church, but they have been robbed from anything with any spiritual understanding or spiritual depth. Therefore, we're not equipped to do Homeland Security Spirit of God style. And Homeland Security Spirit of God style is when we begin to, to dethrone powers and principalities and we have authorities in a city. Um, I'll, I'll, Glenn, has heard something, I'll share this with you. A pastor friend of mine, an apostle in the Hawaiian Islands. Hurricanes coming against the island. Him and his wife, she's a prophet. And they're, they got pastors under them. They prophesy, you will not touch this island. You know what happened? The hurricane came right up to the sand and went around the island. Then it went against another island that one of his pastors was, um, uh, that was under him. And they said, and they again prophesied from their island over that island. You'll not hit, and you will not hit that island either. You know what happened? Devastated the island, wiped out the church, ripped the roof off. Okay. He said, God, why did we have authority here but not there? He said, George, in every city I put a man of God to rule and reign in the spirit with me. If he will not, then the demonic prince will continue to be seated in heavenly places and have his way, kill, steal, and destroy. That pastor's wife, even though they were raised under casting out demons, moving in miracles, praying in tongues, pastor's wife did not like that stuff. So she said, no, 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 we're going to be a user-friendly church. We're not going to offend anybody. We're not going to get heavy on the spirit. We're just going to go good family values. Do you understand what I'm saying? And All right. So they had no authority. They got devastated. Is that the same thing as saying, like, um, for example, there is a church in L.A., and on the exact other side, there's this dirty little store. And I cannot for the life of me figure out why that store is still there if that church has been there for as long as it's been there. Because there's no spiritual authority. When God took me to New York and he said, because God told me, he said, Don, if you don't get into New York, because I've been holding the gate out here and God's been raising up warriors, fence posts as the walls being built here. Part of it is because you get so much spirits from overseas, water spirits and everything. But anyway, he told me, if you don't get into New York, if you don't begin to build a wall, greater destruction is going to get hit. Since I've been there, several catastrophes have been avoided, which is really interesting. He would take me right into, I didn't even know why I was here, and then I look on the news, oh my God, I was on a wrong train, boom, boom, boom. The helicopter crashed, three people walked out unscathed. Does that make sense, seeing stuff like that? Um, um, I didn't want to go at one point. I was thinking, oh gosh, you know, how am I going to afford this? You know, I'm trying to be obedient here. And I just thought I waited too long, da da da. And God, I watched him literally say, 98% of my church is not listening to me, and now you're not going to listen either. And I watched him just walk away, and I said, okay, God, I'm sorry. Yes, I will do it. I thought it was really interesting. 98% of a church, do you realize he means pastors, prayer leaders, tithers, home cell group leaders? Because they perpetuate the spirit or the religious spirit that's over their church. Does that make sense? It's all perpetuated in the programs that are acceptable. Does that make, it's, it's really interesting. So when I get to New York, first thing he shows me is a couple gateways and immediately, and I'm dealing with witchcraft the whole time, immediately I'm tuned into the fact that there's a brand new uh, program that's out called uh, Wicked. And it's a, um, it's a big uh, Broadway play. This thing is up for 20, 10 or 20 Tony Awards. Um, it's drawing Wicca witches from around the world into Manhattan to see this thing. It's probably making $500,000 a night, all right? And it's all predicated on the witches in Oz before Dorothy came along. And it's an amazing production. Oh, there's a book. Right, right. Now, this is huge. Now, you want to know where 
You want to know where, and this is drawn, which is like crazy. They think it's going to run for 20 years. Do you want to know where it took root? Right across the street from Times Square Church. Because, again, they're user-friendly. They're, they're baby Christians. They're not dealing with principalities. And when you walk in front of that church, you can see the spirit over there. Oh, it's darn, just cursing that Christians. You can see that it just was dark over the front. It was amazing. And God was saying, I'm not kidding. These churches, these people are not equipped to deal with this level of witchcraft. They have no clue. They have no idea. Nor are they raising people to have this level of authority. Yeah. Are there intercessors for the body of Christ? Because I, I can just say that when you're underneath the spirit of religion, when you're underneath the spirit, or it's just spirit, it's like anesthetizing. You don't even know it's there. Nope. It's, it's like so that. subtle. And it grows and it goes until you're totally down and you can't breathe. You know, and the only way it can be broken is by the Holy Spirit. It's not like you can say one day, oh, you know, when I mean, you can if you know it's there. Part of what happens in the church, and I think this is also a waste of time. <laughs> I probably, I should probably be nicer about it. But here's what I think happens. Um, I don't know if I should. I mean, I want to use examples of real people to see if it can help to open eyes. But I don't want to just come against people because that. You know what I'm saying? It, it looks bad, but I, I, I know a pastor that dropped dead <laughs> on the pulpit the moment that the mandala opened and the worst fires started. Um, God had sent this prophet to him probably six to eight times on key things because he had the ability to access intercessors worldwide. Um, I know there were many prophets that he did not receive. Does that make sense? Um, I know people that prayed for eight years. I'm talking, I'm talking people that were in deliverance and healing ministries within the church. Um, they prayed specifically for his pride to be humbled. I've got people praying for me constantly about, and it's like, what a stupid, his pride's humbled, he's dead. Now, you didn't affect the, the territory that you're in. You didn't break the poverty spirit nor the pornography spirit in the territory your church is in, because why? Church became flypaper. Everybody got self-absorbed inside the church, my church, my position. My, well, I don't like what the pastor's saying. Well, I think we need to pray. Well, we need to, do you realize a uh, church I was at in Northridge, same thing. They decided to pray the pastor's secretary out as if that was what was going to bring revival. No, it, it, so it was a sideways move. It didn't do squat. It hurt her feelings really bad. Does that make sense? It was totally, and people begin to manipulate within, because what happens, please forgive me, but I think women sometimes, I find it more in the women, they have their clique. They have their family, and this woman, and, and then they team up, and that one's out, and the, you know what I'm saying? And you get, and it's like, what the heck does this have to do with taking our city for Jesus, or blockading the destruction from manifesting and taking out kids? And I feel like, when's the last time you prayer walked over your school. You know what I'm saying? The neighborhood schools. You know, they're in there putting condoms on bananas. You know what I'm saying? When's the, they're, they're, the, the Buddhist and Tibetan witchcraft that was all through here was in the schools. The schools were running bus trips. They were showing them the demons. They were showing them how to do this witchcraft. What the hell are you praying in your little church? It's like a stupid flypaper. I'm sorry. Does that make sense? And I've got, like I said, I'm dealing with this situation right now where somebody's just praying, praying, praying over me, and it's like, stop it. You're hindering me from hitting the targets in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we, uh, do you understand? I'm sorry, but I get so frustrated because the church becomes so self-absorbed. See, we're supposed to come together Jesus style to get impartations to try and understand if we're in some warfare to get clear to the warfare, right? Or, or to get, if we need some deliverance or whatever to get set, to go hit the targets, go into the darkness, don't go into the church. Church becomes, uh, half the times it's people that couldn't accomplish anything in the world, so they try and be a big shot in this little public group, and then they feel like they're special because they've got 20 people under them, or 5,000 people under them. Does that make sense? And it's, it's like, is God's objective to get everybody in the world to show up to my church to sit under my opinion every Sunday, and I'm the world church pastor? Is that God? Sometimes if you look at some of the, churches, that's like them, that's their motive. Get as huge of a church. Do you realize the bigger the church, the harder it is to get anything done for God? Because there's just too many people to manage. Do you realize small little teams where you've got a prophet or somebody here inaccurately is much more mobile? Look in the real army. Who, who does in a real army, who wins the war? Do you realize in real military, you know who wins the wars? 
the snipers and the five-man elite teams that go behind enemy and take out key targets. That's who actually wins the war. Do you realize one sniper puts the fear of God into the... Because he can, he can hit, he can, he's got a two-mile range on his shot. He's deadly accurate. You ever, there was a, there was a uh, uh, on the History Channel, there was a special on snipers. I thought it was amazing because God was dealing with me as he was having me go way undercover and hit key targets. And I was just feeling like the church was... A, you know what I'm saying? The sniper, it was like a sniper. His own men are afraid of him. Because most of the men in the regular infantry don't really ever kill anybody. Maybe a one, or, you know what I'm saying? But the sniper is a one shot, one kill. And he's probably got 80 people. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? He's, he's a death machine. So his own men are a little bit weird about him. So it's not like he has fellowship there. He's out behind enemy lines by himself. Sometimes, come on, for days, can't even move or breathe. Uh, he's pinned down an entire troop. And every time they step out, bam, they drop dead, so they cannot move. They're trying to pinpoint his location. He has to be very careful about his shots because they're looking for that muzzle flash or they're looking for the little reflection off the... They're trying to figure out so they can... Because they can't tell where the shot's coming from because he's very camouflaged and hidden. But do you realize um, uh, some of the wars we were in, our, America always had to raise a sniper. And, and when we weren't in war for a while, this was amazing story, we had to reinitiate the whole sniper program because the war was not progressing. And once the snipers were in place, bam, they, would, they could shut down that whole military thing rather than just having a bunch of guys bash it out. One sniper. Now, the thing with the sniper was he had a high percentage of death because his own men weren't covering him and the enemy really wanted him dead because he was more of a hindrance than the whole army. Isn't that interesting? So, um, it's just really, it's just, it's, it's fascinating. Um, but the bottom line is the anointing and the call and where God wants to take each one of us individually is amazing compared to what the religious order or system will let you see. And it's not that the people are bad that are in it. It's the spirit that prophesies or is perpetuated in the name of God. Now, how did that get into place? Well, think about this for a minute. Didn't Jesus defeat the devil at the cross of Calvary 100% permanently? Now it's just a matter, as many as here, the revelation can move in the same power. Do you guys all know that? Are you all aware that everything, that Jesus is our example? First, the Bible says, firstborn among many brethren. Jesus said, the disciple is not above his master. Isn't it enough you're just like me? And then we see the disciples move in the same power, and that's available to all of us today. All right, so if Jesus, if I'm the devil and the Jesus, put yourself, you have to put yourself, in, have you ever been in sports or anything? You have to study your opponent. You have to understand how he's going to hit, how he's going to, or you're, you're, you're a fool, a boxer. You've got to know, this guy really, you know, you got to look out for it, because he's going to hit you with that jab, because you're a sucker for that. You know, you know what I'm saying? You've got to study your opponent. I think it's amazing when you study the opponent and people accuse you of, oh, well, you're focusing on the devil too much. No, maybe I want to win because the Bible says we win. Everybody says, oh, well, we win, but they don't know the steps that it takes to get there. And part of it is, is learning the spiritual warfare. Part of it is, is learning the authority. Part of it is getting out from under a religious spirit. Now, if I was the devil and you just defeated me, totally made an open spectacle of me, all, me and my hordes, and you just kicked my butt major, and now you unlocked what was a mystery to all, the crea all your creation that I had been ruling, right? Remember, I'm the devil, and we're printing, you're, you're Jesus, okay? Suddenly, you're making all these... Remember, Jesus said, the prophets have wanted, have desired to know these revelations, but they're being made to you. To the people I speak in parables, but I'm giving them to you. He was revealing the mysteries that had been cloaked from mankind. He said he was doing that. So now Jesus not only defeats me, who have been ruling over all this creation ever since Adam left the authority and let me, the devil, take that position. All right, now Jesus defeats it, and he's revealing it to as many. What, would you, what business would you get in? First of all, what business has the devil would I get in? First of all, what are my weapons? I'm a liar, thief, and a robber, come to kill, steal, and destroy. What, I'm the father of lies, aren't I? The devil, right? What business would I get in? Church! I'd get in the church business. 
I'd get right in the middle of the religious and take the very revelations and cloak them and, and cloak them and get them fighting and praying over the pastor and praying over this and the women manipulating this and get them all focused. You're not going to get the relationship you want. He's looking at somebody different. And everything but allowing people to get the mysteries that's going to wake us up to kick the devil's butt. Eventually, John does see the day when all of us wake up, moving in power, seated in heavenly places. There is no longer an open area for the demonic to rule because the sons of God have met him all over the world. Does that make sense? They've met Jesus in the clouds. The whole creation groans in earnest expectation for the manifestation of the sons of God. And John, at one point, we all go, that's the man that troubled the nations? This was nothing. No, but he was such, he was so, he cloaked himself so well and blended so into that whole religious thing. That doesn't mean that every church is full of the devil. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the spirit of revelation and the spirit of religion are at war. And without realizing it, we get sucked into the, sucked into the religion. So it's really interesting because, again, I get this email that comes to me. Okay. Eight or nine months ago, tried to warn people that Michael Moore was going to do a... Michael Moore is the one that did Bowling for Columbine. Michael Moore was going to do an expose on Bush uh, in order to prevent the re-election, and it would be time that he would release it just before the election, because you get about a three to four week, you know, attitude across the nation once a, a film or duck. That's why I think it's so funny you know what I mean, to think that I'm going to influence major things sitting, no matter how big my local congregation is, compared to if I produce film and TV. Does that make sense? When I'm putting things out over the air like that. Um, so Michael did that. Disney said uh, they won't distribute it, which added to the interest, added to the First Amendment, people wanting to fight, stick up for the First Amendment. Does that make sense? Even the guys in Cannes, Cannes Film Festival, France, Remember I told you, just one in France. Remember I also told you the gates of hell have been opened all up in France and the demons are big time. They're major anti-Semitic in France and anti-Christian. That's what happened in Nazi Germany. You know that, right? Have you guys been to the website or anything? Missionhollywood.org. Uh, go to the website, missionhollywood.org. What happened in Nazi Germany? Same thing. The Tibetan gods, all the portals were open and that's why that society went nuts and started massacring all those people. So you can't get people doing wacky stuff until the spirit realm, the dark spirit realm, increases. Dalai Lama specifically does that to increase the dark spirit realm. Anyway, Michael Moore in Kant, where the dark spirit realm is, where the anti-Semitism Jews beating why? Because of all the mandalas and portals that were gone undetected, nobody there to blockade that. Um, Can just awarded him first place. He won the Cannes Film Festival with Fahrenheit 9-11, which will put more pressure on it being aired. Now the controversy will build, 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 and then it'll be aired prior to the election. Wonderful. M me as a prophet, knowing that was coming down, having access to kings, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, I don't want to go the people I had access to, that I knew other stories that we could have done a counter thing, and I, that was one of the projects I was trying to get done, couldn't do it, too busy trying to keep people to focus, help me with the ministry, focus on this, vote. you know what I'm saying, too, didn't have the funds, couldn't vote, you know what I'm saying, and I look at that at this point, and I look at the impact that that's going to have, do, do you understand, and then somebody emails me this little email that says, and it's some guy, you know, running around trying to be a big shot in the Christian society. I, I am so uninterested in being anything in the Christian society. I, I do not have any interest in it whatsoever. God said, go into the world. I want to I impact the world. I don't care to impact the subculture called... Does that make sense? It's like, God. So it says, it said, now watch this. See if you can identify how inward focused this is. Are you ready? It says, God has put many ministries on hold. So now everybody, because, see, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Many people's ministries have become their business. And so now I have to manage my business. And what do they do? I know, I know a church that I was at that God used me to keep them from going this way. But now they're hiring people, advertisers, to figure out how to market their church better. To increase their numbers. And I said, wonderful. What did you do in the city? What did you affect in the city? Does that make sense? I don't know about you, but anyway, this person sent me this, this email because I'm supposed to think, oh, well, that's what it is. Then I need to sit around more and pray, God, make my ministry better. God, da, 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 you know, and you know what I wrote back to her? I said, quit sending me this garbage. I said, I don't have a ministry, nor do I want a ministry. I said, I lay my life down so many hours a week to do what God asked me to do. Does that make sense? Period. Maybe if some of these other people would quit trying to make their ministry their job, 
and just start being obedient to what God asks to do, maybe we could win some of these battles. Does that make sense? Isn't that interesting? But I probably, I was a little <laughs> perturbed. I just kind of, I, I just kind of blew it off at that because I get, it's the whole point of that little inward prophecy is to get everybody focused again in the fly paper. Does that make sense? That has nothing to do, I said, if people would lay their lives down and just listen and do what he says, things would go a lot better. Instead of trying to, well, I've got to, I've got to do this. I've got to build this church. I've got to build it. I don't have to build nothing. I, I have to be obedient to what God wants me to do and do it. Does that make sense? God's told me to raise warriors up. He told me if you don't raise warriors up, this thing is increasing so much, we're not going to have enough authority to hold the nation. Homeland security, spirit of God style, is the sons of God meeting Jesus in the clouds, dethroning powers and principalities, building spiritual walls to resist when the demonic come from, from our invasions. When we've gone into Africa, we were sharing a little earlier, when we got into Africa, didn't you notice as Reinhard Bunke went into Africa, witchcraft, and, what were we hitting? Witchcraft. You notice how it increased in our nation. Notice how it went right on the mainstay. Why? It's displacement. When a spirit goes out of a man or a country, does that make sense? It just moves. We didn't have any spiritual walls built here because nobody understood. Certain ones of us were taking extra hits and going after targets, but taking down a target without having a wall. Do you understand in warfare, anybody ever heard, hold the line? See, Mel Gibson's been being used for a long time. Go look at the Patriot. When they're in the fight, hold the line! You have to have a line of what you occupy versus what they occupy. Do you remember when we were soldier, when he called broken arrow? Broken arrows when the line were broke. There was no longer a line. It was chaos. The enemy and the, everything was mixed. Remember that? Always in military, you have a line. You have a wall that you occupy. Do you remember when the walls were down around Jerusalem, they were approached before God? Why? Because walls are there to keep invading spirits or attitudes out. When our walls are broke down, we can't stand in faith. When our nation's spiritual walls are broke down, every kind of garbage gets into key positions. Who's been teaching about building walls? It's all through the Bible. We've got examples of it. You can't build a wall unless you have warriors built. We don't even have warriors built. And what we've been doing now is we've gone in here against the Muslim stuff or whatever that particular demon spirit. Look at the attacks through Michael Moore and others that are manifested the spirit realm is using to take a Christian president out because he's got to stop Bush because Bush is breaking up by the spirit of God is breaking up a lot of that dark spirit all right but what's happened three and a half years ago I knew we had a short window and we needed to advance the kingdom rapidly and I watched people and I watched people not receive the prophets God was sending. I watched people not hear what God was saying to do. Does that make sense? Keep playing the same game, per going nowhere, inwardly focused. Oh, well, God, why is my ministry not going? Well, what about my ministry and debtor? Well, uh, my ministry and debtor, you know what I'm saying? And everybody's trying to motivate their men. I don't care. I want to see warriors built up. I, I don't care about your personal lives. Does that make sense? I hope you can have successful ones. God bless you. But we're looking for warriors that can take some territory. If the sons of God do not meet Jesus in the clouds, do not learn how to dethrone the territorial spirits in the sphere of rule that God has given you, then you know what man will do? Then as the demons increase because there's no opposition and men start going crazy, you know what carnal man will do? put a mark on them and try and control all their finances and try to control flesh will try to control flesh. Why? Because the, the sons of God did not become manifest because they were seduced by religious spirits and the religious system of the USA. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. I don't mean to make it sound funky, but we don't have time to be playing all these soulish, churchy games. I can't believe that people can't see the day and the time and the season and the hour that we're in. You know, and now we're months away from, from the election. You've got major forces already set that know how to use the media that are set into place. And I'm thinking to myself, what have I been doing? I needed to focus on media. I needed to focus on countermeasures. Does that make sense? God's given me several other things I need to do. Do you, you follow? And I get, I get pulled off into doing the ministry things. Or I'm like, no, God told me, he said, you could waste your entire life trying to get the church saved. He said, I put you in a media city go over the church's head and produce these revelations in film and TV. And my children that know my voice will hear it and be encouraged. And they will hear and they will raise up to do it. Isn't that interesting? You have a question. No, sir. 
N- nothing? You know, I did have a question. Uh, you know, talking about uh, Jerusalem, with all this chaos, how, what are we doing to kind of like change that kind of lifestyle? I know the states, we live in this great country, but it all starts from that part of the world. All right. There's a number of things that happen. So, give me. Can I have a few minutes to go through? Some, it, it's not a one answer. It's it's happened to look at a lot of phenomena. Okay. In the Bible, do you remember when uh, the one woman was? I can't remember the exact story. I think she was sexually abused, blah, 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 died at the doorstep over the threshold. Then they cut her body up and sent it to the 12 tribes of Israel and all the men of the tri- to get them motivated to fight. They all came in and massacred the, all the men in that city. Remember that? Do you remember that story in the Bible? All right. If you, you do, okay, a couple of you. If, if you look later, remember uh, Joseph, whose brothers threw him in a pit? As he passed through that city, they wanted to kill him. As he passed past that city, they just threw him in a pit. When murder and death happens in a territory, it defiles the land. When innocent blood is shed and there's a spiritual stronghold. Part of trying to keep this gate open here was the farmer's market massacre. Simultaneously, which is a major gateway. And God pulled me off the wall because I had taken too many hits by myself out here. And he said, if I don't pull you down, this next hit you'll die. You cannot, you, you are, you are, your soul is ripped to shreds. You've been taking too much spiritual hits trying to shield this territory. And my church is not listening to my prophets. And he said, I'm going to use you as an example. Uh, if you, he said, if you die out here, people will just say, yeah, he was a big mouth. He thought he could fight. Print. Now he's dead. And God says, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to pull you off the wall, but destruction is going to hit the territory. I didn't know about the destruction part. He didn't show me that because if he would have, I wouldn't have come off the wall. I would have just fought and died. Does that make sense? And he just said, nope, nope, nope. I've got better plan. And he pulled me off. But then as he was talking to me and telling me how much he loved me, I said, I'm off the wall. What happened? And then, boom, big old raindrops, this big started like elephant-sized tears. And I'm like, God, what's going on? Why are you crying? And then I get a phone call. Ten people just got killed over here. Uh, two blocks away, two blocks from here, two blocks. Th- this is the gateway that we protect here. <clears throat> but God had pulled me off the wall. Again, too many major things hit in the city, one after the other. I had, I don't even want to go into the stuff and why and, and people praying against it. You just want to hear it. All right. Simultaneously, right after that effect, same thing happened in Manhattan, New York with the Staten Island Ferry. 200, same, 200 involved, just like here, 10 died. All right. I went to Manhattan, New York to find out. Sure enough, it's a gateway. That's another gateway, the way Manhattan is set up, coming into the territory, <clears throat> into that territory. Again, the innocent blood has to do with defiling the land. It op- I don't completely understand it, but it opens up a demonic uh, access or strengthens that authority. No matter what happens on the gates, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I started this as a meeting because I did not want to be called pastor. And I, even though I'm licensed pastor and, yes, we're licensed as a church, 5013C and all, I mean, all that stuff, I just had seen, I didn't have any pastors that I respected. And I said, no, God, I don't want to be called a pastor. Pastors are people that don't hear from you. I hear from you. I don't want people to lump me into that same category. And I don't mean to say that at all. But if there's any pastors listening and you don't hear from God, you need to get underneath prophets or you need to get serious with your own walk so you can start delivering God's message and not the religious agenda. Does that make sense? But anyway, God rebuked me because I wasn't telling people it was a church. It was a meeting. I just said... Uh, and God said, he, he, he said, I was, I'm considering repenting on taking Hollywood. I said, why? He said, because the pastors in the city are not receiving the prophets I'm sending, and the prophets aren't doing what I told them to do. How can I take a city when nobody's listening to me? Um, and I said, what, God? He said, I told you to start a church. I said, I started a meeting. He just said, I didn't tell you to start a meeting. I told you to start a church. And then I understood the gates of hell will not prevail against a meeting. No, against the church. The reason our church is in this building is because we're right on a major gateway. When the Tibetan witchcraft came to pour the sand mandala to make the water bitter, it was right there. And what was it, two or three of us were there. I ended up running right in the middle of the thing. I mean, not on my watch, you don't. You know? Every time they try to throw in the water, it won't go back out. Okay. Now, um, so you've got Jerusalem. Not just one year of blood, not one incident. Blood after blood after blood after blood after blood. So you've got a lot... Principalities are very strong in that territory. Okay, does that make sense? Number, number one. 
Number two, the church doesn't know how to deal with principalities. We don't even have to talk anymore. We're done. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and go further, but that in and of itself, we're done. How, how, they don't know how to deal with principalities. The people going over there don't know how to deal with principalities. They don't know how to undefile the land. We're done. They're doing it all in the flesh. Okay, we'll, we'll keep going though so you can get a, a ballpark idea of what's happening. Um, you've also got human will. The Bible says we don't pray against people. People are not our enemies. We pray against the spirit realm that influences people. I'm fighting something right now because I've got a person praying against my will because they want me to be their husband. Why? Because they're listening to a demon. Does that make sense? Now, it's their will putting pressure against my will. So it's been a real pain. In the, it's not just funny, though. It's been, it's really, it's, it's unneeded. Do you realize that the devil's favorite thing to do is to use our anointing against each other. And that's why God gives us rules. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. Pray against the spiritual influence. Now, you've got major hatred. One man has generational hatred of another man, and that is perpetuated. An eye for an eye, eye for an eye, eye for an eye, eye for an eye, eye for an eye. And Jesus is the one that says, forgive. Why? Because you've got to break the chain. Somebody has got to stand up and break the chain. However, that is one human's will against another will. Yes, it's blinded by spirits, hatred, and they can't see Jesus, but they can't see Jesus because the principalities are too strong. And the church does not deal with principalities. They don't understand what prophetic assault worship is. Do you realize we were demonstrating taking prophetic assault worship, conquering an atmosphere, putting it one and a half blocks from the world's largest film market, and we controlled that film market atmosphere, and they wanted family values. We were set to do that a second year in a row with Charisma, but the competition, if you will, competition, somebody decided to have a meeting 50 miles away from what the devil wanted to occupy to drive all the demons back to the ocean where the devil wanted the demons, pulled off any fence posts to go do a one-day event so 30,000 could look at themselves while the ministries here got blown out of the territory. Displacement theology. The demons were absolutely... Wherever you worship God, you'll clear an area. Why don't we go clear the... Our whole point is, why don't we go clear the areas that the devil's trying to control? It's not, can we throw a big meeting? But see, big meet, see a, a, a $1.5 million Rose Bowl giveaway does not change a city. A sustained day after day after day presence into key gateway and key targets and learning how to build walls and blockade and hold. You can't... What's the point of driving a principality out of a city if you've got no walls around it? You build your walls, then you drive the spirit out, and then you keep your wall fortified to make sure it can't get back in. And if it's hitting the south gate, you send some extra... T Do it like a real castle. Come on! You know... And it's not, it's not rocket science here. It's common sense. It's in this book. But we get caught up in these... Why? Because that got a write-up in Charisma Magazine. Instead of the article... See, we're dealing with the Queen of Heaven. Leviathan, Queen of Heaven. Yamanja is what they call it in Brazil. It's that African water spirit. And that thing is in the middle of the religious system. Do you think that thing wanted the body of Christ via Charisma Magazine to understand we could take our, go into the darkness? What a concept. Take our worship right next to the very key time of decision making. American film market. $500 million worth of films that influence the spirit of the world for the next three years. Whenever these, there's certain times how did I know that's important? Because the demonic every year would come in super heavy during that. And I started thinking, why is the atmosphere getting so heavy right now? Because the demonic has to control it. And in those years, witchcraft, sodomy, horrible, that was the offerings that were coming up at the shows. And people under those things would like, yeah, that's what they would buy. We began to understand Jesus wasn't kidding when he said go into the darkness. How many times have you been invited to a Christian retreat? When's the last time you were invited to the beachfront, to a gateway, to, to throw an advance? Does that make sense? To advance the kingdom into the territory. People go, I don't know, Santa Monica's too hard. I don't want to come in there. I want to go find a soft, cushy life. Why? Because that's what I learned church is all about. It's about the presence and the love of God and the soft, cushy life. And that's why we go to church. And you don't have love in your ministry. You're just, you're, you're, 
I'm kind of like David, aren't I? No, David loved God. No, David had a heart for war. No, wait a minute. No, David, everybody said, stop, you know, well, we have the heart of the father. We just like the love. Hold on. No, you have the heart of the mother. The heart of the father kicks friggin' devil butt. And it doesn't put up with destruction. You've got, I, I like the charmed episodes. Charm, the witchcraft show. Why? Because the church didn't listen when I, I can't pick on that pastor anymore. He's not around. But they wouldn't listen when I tried to get intercession to stop some of the shows because we knew the so sources and the focal points where they were being inspired from. You hit something during inspiration. You don't wait for it to be a moneymaker. But anyway, it's interesting because in that show, they still did the white lighters, which were kind of like Christians, you know. It's supposed to be. But everybody knows that religious Christians are religious which is unfortunate because we need a makeover in our public image. That's not going to happen if some of us don't do what God told us to do and do the films and TV that will start putting in the right image. So that's why I need to stay focused. But anyway, um, at least they had the white lighters. They had the bad witches and the good witches because, see, witches have power. Christians don't have power. The whole world knows that. Christians have condemnation, judgment, gossip. Does that make sense? And immoral, immoral relationships and sodomizing kids in, the, in the, the priesthood. And the world knows Christians are whacked out. They don't, the last thing the world thinks is that Christians have power. Isn't that funny? So they're trying to produce these concepts within their understanding. Well, we're a good witch. I'm a white wizard, you know, and I'm not a bad witch. Anyway, so it's interesting, but in that, while they're talking, basically their lives are set to shield and protect heritage. Oh, it's amazing. And then they talk about the innocents. The innocents are all the people in the street that don't know anything about the spiritual understanding. They have no idea what's going on in the war in the heavens. Remember the Bible said, the prophet, it's a little black book. In the future, there's going to be a little black book. It's sweet in your mouth. Jesus loves me, this I know. And it's bitter in your stomach. It's because you get opened up. And I remember when I first saw demons cast out and realized, oh my God, there's demons. Oh my God. I mean, life was like, for about two weeks, it was like, uh. But then, I cast a demon out. And then I got a revelation. My whole life, I've been going through horrible torment with things not working, relation, and it's been these screwy-ass little demons getting in the way, and I have authority to crush you now. And I went on a rampage, man, and I thought, no, life just got great. <laughs> and I got excited, and I started going to every meeting while they talked about, one day we're going to see the miracles, one day. And I'm like, one day my foot, come here, boom, pass, shut up, go raw, come on. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, come on, what is this stuff? You having coffee with the devil? I like what Bob says. If you're not praying in the Holy Ghost eight hours a day, you're having coffee with the devil. <laughs> we need some spiritual warriors built up. We need some understanding. We need people to quit minding each other's business. Does that make sense? I don't know where people are getting this idea that church is about dictating moral agendas. You ready for this? Are you guys really ready for this? I'm not trying to put people in an unmoral place, but I want to get real with the Bible here. Why? So that we can get refocused at maybe what church is supposed to be, which is moving in the spirit, not minding each other's business. Let me see. David had a heart for war. God didn't seem to care about his relation status. He really didn't. In fact, the only thing God cared about was when he took another man's wife and said, I would have given you more wives. I mean, is this the same God that says, I change not? I, I mean, we can come up with all kinds of, well, that was this era, that was, we can do anything we want, but didn't God say, I don't change? Now, I'm not trying to say we're supposed to have a bunch of wives. I'm trying to say, maybe that's not God's focus. Maybe God's focus was David. Saul killed thousands and David killed tens of thousands of what? God's enemy. Maybe God's focus is if we'll be about our father's business, he'll add all these things to you. He'll take, he'll, he'll bless you. It's not, the whole church thing is not, you come to church to serve God so that your mate will line up with what you want. Does that make sense? Maybe it's not about that. I hope you guys have great relationships. Don't bring them here. People, in other words, bring them here, but don't bring your dirty laundry here. <laughs> don't bring the gossip of what somebody's doing. I don't care. You work that out with God. Paul said you're going to have trouble no matter how you do it, so quit trying to work it out in church. It isn't what church is for. Church is to grow in the things of the Spirit, to learn to hear from God, to find out what God's saying in this time and hour. How do you think we get from um, the religious order that, oh, everything's going bad, oh, now they're doing this, but I read the end of the book and we win. <laughs> how do we get from that messed up loser attitude that can't see anything, it's 10 years behind, to the place where we're ruling and reigning and winning? I think that we're trying to fill the gap right now. I think we're trying to fill some revelation 
dispose of religious nonsense, refocus. We got too many people inwardly really focused. Pray the pastor out. Pray me in. I need to. I'm this and that. I'm up above you. I'm over you. I'm. Da -da. Hey, stop controlling each other. You know, find out what God's doing. Learn how to hit targets and quit judging other people's lives. You don't walk in their shoes. You don't know the issues God's working out. And you don't know how God is fashioning or why he's putting it. Come on. Didn't he tell one prophet to go marry a prostitute? Well, that's not going to work in today's church. You guys are going to get in God's way. Because everybody's pushing moral issues. And I'm not saying to go marry prostitutes. Does that make sense? I'm saying maybe God's focus is something different than the moral agenda we've turned church into. How many Christians you know that have been sitting under this moral agenda, still aren't married, and still don't have a family, and now they're giving up on it because they're too old? I watched a lot of them, and I started saying, what's wrong here? And even in the middle of... I'm just trying to avoid saying certain people's names. The guy who has made hundreds of millions of dollars pushing the rapture doctrine out of Texas, even in the middle of all of the, this and that and the moral did it and all this stuff, he then turns around and says, in another 20 years, Paris is going to be all Muslim because the Muslims are having babies like crazies and the Christians aren't having any babies. Well, Christians are so whacked out, does that make sense? Trying to please everybody and everybody getting in everybody's business and everybody praying them out of relationships and da da da, da. You understand what I'm saying? Leave it alone. Focus on the things of the Spirit and quit focusing on making each person your ministry. See, we've been so... Church is a hospital in, in USA. Come on in and submit under me. Submit under me. Sub and I pray over you. And I fix you. And I fix Don't you notice how I kind of kick your guys' butt, refocus you a little bit, and then tell you to pray for me? Or support the advance that we're doing into a territory? Yes, people come in and they need nurturing. Does that make sense? And you need that hospital mode. But no military in their right mind could ever win a war if it was all hospital mode. And when I was hitting principalities and needed prayer covering, I started going to... And I went to probably... 10 or 15 people. People used to come to us all the time because of the healing and deliverance ministry that was involved. So I prayed for people for years. Now I thought, hey, i got to get some demons off me. All they prayed about was my personality. You're too aggressive, your hair is too long, and your shoes don't match your socks. Oh, and I thought, what the heck are they praying? God said, they're, they're praying over your personality because that's the way their pastors pray over them to adjust their personality. Did they ever read the scripture that says, woe to you pastors that make sluices for my fish? Do you know what a sluice is? A sluice is a narrow passage. Okay? So if you could imagine the fish, you ever seen some of the big, there's some beautiful fish, there's some really wacky looking fish. Does that make sense? You ever seen the different sizes and shapes? Could you imagine, what was God thinking? You know, maybe he likes variety. Maybe he created you the way he wants you. But the fish all of a sudden have to fit through this sluice gate. Kim Clement says, yeah, and I came out in the tight butt Armani suit. I had the look. I had the, I'm suddenly part of the church, and I got that whole look, right? In other words, it, 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 it clips the it, it diversity and individuality that God obviously enjoyed. And so nobody feels like they fit in. God's not trying to get you to fit in. He's trying to get you to fit in your own skin. He's trying to get you happy with God said the way I made you. I made you the way I made you. Now get happy with it and start finding out why I made you the way you are. Yes, we can have issues that God wants us to deal with to make us better. And God wants us to, some of us to quit focusing on the past and quit focusing on ourselves. You are supposed to lose your life. Do you know what that means? Your life is your self-image. Hello? You're supposed to lose your Life. That's your self-image, the way you perceive yourself. And you're supposed to see yourself, God said, the way I see yourself. What did he, let me give you scripture. We've got to give scripture so we know. Gideon, mighty man of valor. Gideon said, no, I'm a wimp. I'm a loser. He even had a song. I'm a loser and I'm not what I appear to be. And he sang it every day. And that was the tone that went around in his head. And God said, if you don't lose your life, you won't find life. If you don't, if you don't believe I'm what you said, you will not be established. There has to come a time. I don't care how many churches you go to. I don't care how many people. Look, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I go to this church. I'm part of Jack Avery. I don't care, what, you don't care who you follow or what. I don't care how many spirit-filled, tongue-talking badges you have. If your self-image has not left... Jesus isn't your Lord. See, Jesus is your Lord when His image is your image. Otherwise, you're 
personal hurts and pains and image from the past, does that make sense? That's your Lord. Because that's what motivates how you see yourself, what you will or won't do. Gideon wouldn't go lead an army because he was a wimp. But once he started to believe that he was a leader, he would do something he wouldn't do in the other mindset. God can't get us to do great things when we see yourself a wimp. Don't try and do anything great in the church, religious structure, because it'll tell you you're a wimp. It'll tell you you're a dumb sheep. Now get in line. Ah, you must, <laughs> you must be one of those goats. <laughs> I remember, just as a funny side note, for example, I was always taught, get up front, get next to the anointing. I mean, go for, get, that guy comes in there, man, get next to yeah, pull on, you know, touch me, blah, blah, right? And so I remember being ushered in and sat down in a large church, and I said, excuse me, I, I, I think that's a polite way to do it, excuse me, could I sit up closer? <laughs> yeah, self-willed, can't submit to authority, huh? You must be one of those goats, sit down out back in the back row. And I, I sat down there as a young believer going, oh, um... Am I being rebellious? Uh, and it just has a way of beating the whack out of you. Does that make sense? It didn't build me up. It didn't, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to be so. I was trying to get next to the anointed. I asked polite, could I sit up closer? But why was that happening? Because in that church, there was major control spirit from the head down. Everybody submitted and controlled. So all the way down to the ushers, without seeing it, they weren't perceiving my heart. There was no real communication. They were seeing through the religious veil that was started at the top. Isn't that amazing? I'm not trying to just... I'm trying to kind of open some eyes and, and bring some understanding how stuff works. You ever heard people say, pray for the peace of Jerusalem? All right. Who said that? Anybody know? Huh? In Psalms. In Psalms? And it, was it said anywhere else in the Bible? Okay. When God is talking about praying, what's he say? Pray in all faith, doubting nothing, and it'll be done for you. But, but let not a double-minded man think he'll receive anything. Jesus said, Assuredly, I tell you, if you speak to that mountain and do not doubt in your heart, do not doubt, do not doubt, what you say will come to pass. When God was teaching me faith, we did this in the Bible. Remember, we went through the first chapter of Genesis. First chapter of Genesis is God's prayer. The second chapter is the manifestation of the prayer. And that's why a lot of people miss it, because they don't understand that whole thing. All right? And John points that out. In John, in the beginning, was the Word. The Word was with God. He's talking about how, how prayers. How does God create? God speaks. Then he sees, and he only sees it good. No doubt in his heart. He speaks it. It's not manifest yet. Now he sees it in his mind's eye, and he sees it good. Jesus said, my words are spirit and truth. Though all heaven and earth pass away, what I say will come to pass. Then he basically goes on to say, the only difference between you and me is you still doubt because you don't know who you are. Where do you get that? That's not in the Bible. Well, I read between the lines a little bit. Oh, well, you can't do that. Well, okay, you tell me if you take, assuredly I tell you, speak to that mountain, do not doubt in your heart, you'll have what you say. Jesus just told you that if you would do it and not doubt, you too, your words would come to pass. My words are spirit and truth. Though I haven't heard a mile come away. What's, he, what's the in-between-the-line part? The difference between you and me is I don't doubt and you do. Can you see that? Did I miss? Did you guys follow with me? Did I do it too fast? Jesus says, Assuredly, I tell you, if you speak to that mountain and do not doubt in your heart, you will have what you say. It will come to pass. Right? So he says, if you doubt in your heart, it won't come to pass. When Jesus said, my words are spirit and truth, though every, all heaven and earth pass away, my words will come to pass. Doesn't he also say, I'm the firstborn among many brethren? The disciple's not above his master. Isn't it enough you're just like me? So he's trying to shift you into that place where your words will come to pass. Can you see that? You've been watching Prophet.TV. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you cutting-edge spiritual technology. If you want to have your spiritual weapons sharpened, be sure to tune in to the next episode of Profit.tv. If you'd like more information, call 818-994-4007. 818-994-4007. 
You've been listening to Profit.TV. You can join us live right now on the World Wide Web at Profit.TV. Again, www.profit.tv is where we sharpen your spiritual weapons using the latest in spiritual technology. This is Seamus from Dublin, and you've been listening to Profit.tv. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you the latest in cutting-edge spiritual technology.